Eight. Okay. So um, thank you all for attending the All Aid ISU, oh, which for those of you who don't know, that stands for Osher Lifelong Learning yeah. Institute at Iowa State University. Yeah. Um, don't forget to mute your microphones. Um, hey, Gerald, and this is Tom Hoover. Can you hear me? Yes, we sure can, Tom. Okay, thank okay. you. So, um, so thank you for coming. This is the fall 2022 learning about fall classes. And this, if you don't know much about Ali yet, Ali is a lifelong learning program for anybody who's 50. It doesn't make any difference who you are, where you came from. You can even be, you know, a lump from Iowa or any place else. Uh, we have members all across the United States. So you just need to be 50 and love to learn. Um, so don't forget um, to mute your microphones. And I am the director, I'm Sherilyn. So I already mentioned that we're gonna record this. It should be on our website later today, but most likely it will be tomorrow so that you can go back and listen to things again. Uh, once we start the presentation, I'm gonna change my view um, so you'll see the instructor. So before the instructors tell you a little bit about the course they will be offering, I'd like to introduce you to the representatives from our two sponsors. Uh, Linda and Bailey are from Green Hills and Steve Larson is from Clarity Asset Management. And their continued support of the program is very important. And we thank them for uh, valuing lifelong learning. And so we're gonna let um, a representative from Green Hills go first. And then once they are finished, then Steve, you can jump right in. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Are you able to hear me, Geraldine? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you from Green Hills and Bailey and I are happy to uh, be sponsors for the Ollie program. We just handed out a number of catalogs this morning. So we're promoting continued lifelong learning. And if you're not familiar with Iowa State, we are just south of beautiful Iowa State University, just behind the Gateway Hotel and Conference Center. We are a 55 plus community with a life plan community. So um, we have townhomes and apartments, home health, assisted living, respite care. We also have, uh, excuse my phone. We also have uh, short-term Medicare certified skilled care, long-term care and memory care. So if you're interested, give us a call. We also have a lot of life enrichment happening out here. Um, we, one of the things we have coming up is the Iowa State Fair. A group is going down to the fair. And for me, that's like the Super Bowl of being a 4-H leader. I was a 4-H leader for 11 years. So that's exciting. Uh, but also we have coming up and you're all invited. We are having songs and sips. So you and a friend are invited to spend a fun night out at Green Hills and enjoy the music and antics by Java Jews. We are going to add a little chutzpah to your day with klezmer music. This musical style is upbeat, joyful, and entertaining in the hands of Java Jews. It's always fun. So we'll have drinks and hors d'oeuvres and August 23rd from 6 to 7 p.m. And it's highly caffeinated klezmer music. And so please RSVP to Bailey Upton, marketing coordinator at 357-5000-greenhillsrc.com or info at greenhillsrc.com by Tuesday, August 19th. So we hope to see you there. Thank you. Hi, I'm Steve Larson. I'm with Clarity Asset Management. I'm the chief investment officer for the firm. And uh, Clarity is a fee-only fiduciary uh, serving financial planning and investment needs of our clients. Uh, there's, a, there's an ancient Hebrew text, uh, the prophet Jeremiah, and there's a quote in there where the, uh, the people, as they were scattered among the nations, were encouraged to seek the welfare of the city in which they live. They live. Or as the city prospers, they as a people will prosper. And we've kind of taken on that moniker for our firm that we exist in the Ames and Central Iowa community in order to seek the benefit of our city and our, our communities. 
And I really feel like that uh, the relationship that we have with clients is utmost importance and developing trust in that relationship so that as lives of people are enhanced and the community is benefited and as the community benefits, everybody benefits. So that's kind of our, our uh, marching orders, our mission. Uh, we serve holistically all financial planning and investment needs. Uh, we invest according to the client's values and goals. Um, and uh, there are a lot of labels put on our approach to investing, but most recently it's called environment, social and governance investing or sustainable investing. And uh, that looks out for the best stewardship of natural and human resources and trying to invest in some of the best run companies. Uh, so if that appeals to you, I'd be gl glad to have a conversation. Thanks. Thank oh, and we're also glad to support Ali. We have uh, <clears throat> a value uh, that we have as a firm is lifelong and life-wide learning. And Ali is such an excellent way to promote lifelong learning in Ames and Central Iowa. And, well, as Geraldine said, anywhere in the world by Zoom. And uh, I really appreciate the diversity and the conversations that are created through all these classes. So thank you. So I, I'd like to thank again, both Green Hills and Clarity Asset Management for their support. It's, it is very valued and we do appreciate everything you do for us. So now let's move on to hearing from the instructors, except for the first two, you will hear um, from those instructors able to attend today or sent a message for us to share with you in the numerical order um, that will show up in the um, catalog. So first, we're going to actually start with class number 3233, and that will be Mike Kobiu. Um, first, thanks to uh, Heather and Gerlin for, for uh, rescheduling to accommodate a, a conflict I couldn't get out of. Um, the course I'm teaching is How Divided Are We Really? Um, it's a hybrid course in person in the Horton Conference Room and online versus via Zoom. Um, it's three weeks, Wednesday, September 14th, 21st, and 28th, from 11 to 12:30, uh, 11 a.m. to 12:30 p.m. Um, there's widespread ag agreement, especially among journalists and many political scientists, that Americans are divided it, politically in a way that may be nearly unprecedented perhaps more so than any time other than right before the Civil War. It may come as a surprise that political scientists are far from unanimous in agreeing uh, as to how divided we are and about the nature of those divisions. Broadly speaking, and roughly corresponding to the three class sessions, we're gonna discuss one, how politically divided we are and the nature of those divisions. And note that the plural divisions there is intentional. Um, two, how do we, uh, how do these current political divisions stack up historically? And three, what are the potential consequences of these divisions? And that's basically it. This is Leroy Kester, course number 56, which is a day trip to Four City, Iowa. Uh, Four City is the home to Winnebago Industries. And this is uh, scheduled for Friday, September 16th. And because of notifications for tour guides and so forth, please register before sep September 2nd, which is a Friday. On that day, we're gonna depart from the parking lot there at the Alumni Building at 6.30. Head north about 85 miles to Four City on Highway 69, where we will land at the Winnebago Motorhome uh, Visitor Center. <clears throat> Winnebago Industries started in 1958 as a manufacturer of small travel trailers, and then motorhomes were added in the 1960s. <clears throat> so from 8.30 to 9, you can browse the Visitor Center use the restrooms, look at historic Winnebago products like the motorhome behind me, and uh, look at the gifts and the other apparel they have, plus they have restrooms. At about nine o'clock, we'll get on the bus again. We'll have tour guides step on with us. We'll go across the road to the Big Bertha plant where they manufacture motorhomes. 
And there, this is a walking tour, stair climbing activity. So be sure you wear closed in shoes. They will provide um, vests and goggles for us to wear. And there's a waiver form that we'll sign as we're traveling north on the bus. And then after the tour at about 11, we will load up again, head over to Waldorf University for lunch. We'll have an entree of cordon bleu with sides and dessert. They do have vegan and gluten-free options if you let us know about that. After lunch at 12.15 to about 12.30, we'll travel over to Heritage Park of North Iowa, which is a 91-acre site dedicated to preservation of America's rural heritage. We will have docents guide us through the museum areas. They have Timberland Museum, which has a large collection of Native American artifacts, other minerals, fossils, wood carvings, and more. There's a transportation museum, there's three log cabins, there's a 1900 farmstead house. And then for any of you that took Mary Lou's class on German prisoners that were uh, held in Algona, three of those barracks have been moved to Forest City and they're now at Heritage Park. Uh, next spring, one of them will be open as a veterans memorial uh, building, but that's uh, in process now, but they do have the buildings on site. At about 2.15, we'll load up on the bus again, travel east to Pilot Knob State Park. The park ranger will step on the bus and we'll have a narrated guided tour with the park ranger as we drive through the park. And then at 3.30ish, uh, we'll drop off the park ranger and head back to Ames and we should arrive back here by 5.30. So again, course number 56, please register before September 2nd. Hope to see you on the bus. This is Sam Wormley. I'm teaching course number one, Learning Mac Computers. It's an eight week class and it starts the 12th of September uh, and runs uh, from nine to 10.30 in the morning. The goal of the class is for you to better learn your Mac Macintosh computer and to enjoy safe, secure, and hassle-free computing. We cover all the hardware, software applications, and there's an emphasis on safe practices and syncing with other Apple devices. The specific topics over the eight weeks are navigating the Mac, making life easier, contacts and connections, Mac resources, word processing, privacy, security, and maintenance, backups, storage, and sharing, and solving problems and getting answers. Thank you. Jorgen, it's your turn. Jorgen, are you able to unmute your mic or unmute your microphone? Right. Okay. How about now? I can hear you. And we are presumably unmuted. Okay. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Somebody does hear him then. Hello? <laughs> yes, you're online. Okay. Fine. Yeah. I'm on line then and everybody is getting me. I'm Jorgen Rasmussen and I'm teaching the course number two, whether the Supreme Court should follow the election returns. It's a four session course. Uh, it meets first on the 12th of September, goes for four weeks, 11 a.m. Now in the last few years, the Supreme Court 
has created so much turmoil, more than in any time in the previous 70, maybe the previous 90 years. And this turmoil has raised a lot of questions. For example, what difference does it make if a, a course or if a case has been decided a certain way in the past, does precedent make any difference any longer? That's a crucial question. What if a basic right doesn't appear in the constitution, isn't written there? Does that make a difference? Is it the case as a majority of Americans believe that in making decisions, members of the Supreme Court do not so much rely on the Constitution as they rely upon their personal preferences. And, oh yes, in this course, we will be looking at Dobbs v. Jackson, which is the course that overturned Roe v. Wade. Now, I'm aware that there are some people who think there should be no controversy in Ali courses. We should all think the same thing. If you think that, don't take this course, because this course deals with important public policy matters. There are certain to be disagreements, and I welcome those. If, however, you do decide to take this course, be sure that when you come to class, you bring the syllabus along with you, because the syllabus is chocked full of a lot of good supporting material and I'm going to be referring directly to that. So if you were interested in these sort of current political issues and controversy, this is a course that you should be interested in. Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. Hello, um, my name is Ron Palumbo and I will be offering class number three entitled Critical Race Th mm -hmm. uh, Theory, A Brief History on Zoom on Monday, October 10th. This is a single session PowerPoint presentation that attempts to trace how a law school theory developed in the 1980s became a hot button political issue 40 years later. We will begin by considering a working definition of some of the key terms in this theory, particularly the difference between prejudice and racism. Next, we'll take a look at the contributions of just a few of the key thinkers who helped develop this theory into an elective course in graduate schools. Finally, we will attempt to unravel how an abstract legal theory suddenly became synonymous with a threat to parental decision-making in educating their children. If like me, you found yourself puzzled at suddenly hearing the phrase critical race theory all over the news, I hope you will join me at 11 a.m. on Monday, October 10th for an introduction to a new controversy in our ongoing culture wars. Thank you. This is, this is Sam Wormley, course number four, can our power grids survive a major solar outburst? This is a one day class uh, at 11, uh, 11 to 1230 on October 17th. Ann Kimber and I team up to explore the survival of our power grids when impacted by major solar outburst. We discuss the causes of solar outbursts, space weather, the basic structure of our power grids and why they are vulnerable and ways to protect them. Specifically, I will talk about the Carrington event from September of, of 1859, solar cycles and monitoring current solar activity. And we'll discuss the basic structure of the power grid, how components are vulnerable to geomagnetic storms and technologies employed to prevent the grid and its components from failing. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Tom Hoover, and I'll be presenting course number five, Emerson Huff, journalist, author, and conservationist. It's a Zoom course. It's a one-day course um, offered on October 24th at 11 a.m. 
in researching about the life of Emerson Huff, I became convinced that the stars aligned over Newton, Iowa in 1857 because Newton City was incorporated during that year and its two most famous favorite sons, Frederick L. Maytag and Emerson Huff were born about two weeks apart during that same year. Um, the world knows all about F.L. Maytag, while Emerson Huff faded into history. So I would enjoy telling you the story of his remarkable life. You joined me in October. And it was a remarkable life. Huff counted among his personal friends, uh, President Theodore Roosevelt. He was a close personal friend of George Bird Grinnell, who was the founder of the Audubon Society and co-founded with President Roosevelt, the Boone and Crockett Club. And Grinnell was the owner and managing editor for many years of Field and Stream magazine. Huff and Pat Garrett, the famous Western sheriff who ended the murderous rampage of Billy the Kid, were close friends. Uh, Huff collaborated with L. Frank Baum on several children's stories. Baum is, of course, most famous for being the creator of The Wizard of Oz. Huff and Francis Ford, who was a noted actor, writer, and director, were good friends. Ford was the brother of John Ford and the uncle of Francis Ford Coppola. And President Woodrow Wilson considered Emerson Huff a, a close acquaintance. Uh, none other than Ken Burns in his documentary series about our national parks credited Huff with being primarily responsible for saving the American bison from extinction. Huff authored 33 books and he gained national fame as a popular novelist about life in the West in the 19th century. 13 of his books were made into movies the Covered Wagon, adopt, adapted from the book of the same title, was considered the most popular silent movie of that era, even more popular than D.W. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation. Huff's writing style it was believed to have created in the 1950s the so-called horse operas, the Western TV series, and movies uh, of that same time period. He wrote in a, muck, a rather muckraking style and his passion uh, about his concerns over the dangers to the American wilderness eventually convinced uh, President Woodrow Wilson to sign into law in 1916, the legislation creating the National Park Service. And Huff's writings um, in uh, news, uh, newspapers and magazines of, of the day also uh, was responsible in part for the creation of the Isaac Walton League. But yet in spite of all of those accomplishments, Huff lived a rather tormented life, captured in the title of his autobiography, Getting a Wrong Start. So if you'd like to hear the rest of that story, I would uh, hope I would ask or, or invite you to, enjoy, to join me on October 24th at 11 a.m. I'm Alex Pfeiffer uh, with the Ames History Museum. I'm doing course number six, the history and future of the Ames History Museum on September 12th, 2022 from 1 to 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. We'll take this opportunity to talk about how our organization um, was founded over 40 years ago. What are the services that we have been providing to the community and continue to provide to the community during that time period? Um, some of the resources and collections that we have at the museum. And then also talk about what does the future look like for the Ames History Museum, primarily focusing on the re recent acquisition of the Ames Pantorium building and a capital campaign that the museum is going through to put an addition on the back of our building and restore the Ames Pantorium building. So we hope, I hope to see you there. Thank you. And this is Carol Rudy from the Museum of Russian Art in Minneapolis, Minnesota. 
I am the uh, outreach education coordinator for the museum. And as such, I have the privilege of developing all kinds of presentations and lectures on a wide variety of topics having to do with the Soviet Union and with the Russian Empire. Uh, the course that I am uh, discussing at this moment is course number seven, Through Different Eyes, Nonconformist Art in the Soviet Union, which will be offered on September 26th from 1 to 2.30. Uh, via Zoom. Uh, the uh, image I think that many of us have of Soviet art is probably rather one dimensional. That is, we imagine lots of, uh, lots of military uh, uh, pictures, lots of grandiose history pictures, all touting the wonderful aspects of the Soviet experience and experiment. But particularly during Khrushchev's time and post Khrushchev, when the Soviet Union actually opened up a bit, a wide variety of nonconformist artists, artists who didn't necessarily fit that picture or that particular uh, official style of painting called so socialist realism, began to practice alternative visions and alternative styles. And it's that variety of styles and subject matter that I hope to explore in this particular uh, PowerPoint presentation. And I hope that as we discuss the, the variety of artists that are active, both official artists and artists who were, as we might say, off the grid, as we discuss these artists, that people who join me in this conversation will come to see the, the variety of artistic experience uh, that was pr actually present and that led to, in 1991, a great diversity of contemporary uh, Russian art. And so I hope you will all join me for that. And uh, I will be looking forward to your comments uh, about that scene as well. Thank you. Hi, my name is Beth Larrabee, and I will be instructor for course number eight, Living a Better, Lighter, and Sustainable Life. This course meets for four weeks on Mondays, beginning on October 10th and running through October 31st from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Central Time. This course will be online with Zoom. Do you ever feel like your life is controlled by your stuff? There are lots of things we can do as individuals to live a more sustainable life while living comfortably. Our true wealth are our natural resources. In this course, we will just delve into strategies we can use in our homes, neighborhoods, and communities to preserve that wealth. We'll investigate everyday things in like food, clothing, cleaning supplies, how do we choose housing, energy use, water use, waste management, plastics how to manage a backyard, how we vote with our wallets, how we spend our money. We'll look at transportation and self-care and even activism through a lens of gratitude and the ethics of reciprocity. If you need an extra motivation, the Earth Overshoot Day for the United States was March 13th of 2022. On this day, we in the United States had exhausted nature's ability to provide for our, for the entire year. We make up for this by consumption of fossil fuels, which in turn drives climate change. We have been reminded about this as mul multiple flood events overwhelming Kentucky and California fights the McKinley fire. So please join us for a a lot of useful ideas and lively discussions and learning from each other. I hope to see you this October for living a better, lighter, and sustainable life. Thank you, Beth. Hi, I'm Anna McCracken, founder of the Ames Writers Collective, a virtual Zoom six week, and this is a virtual Zoom six week course, number nine, Let's Write Together. Weekly, we'll write stories about our lives inspired by writing prompts and read our work to each other to receive positive feedback. 
These sessions are based on the Amherst Writers and Artists Method, a philosophy that believes everyone is a writer. Additionally, I will supply a mini craft lectures about the elements of a good story. Topics may include story structure, dialogue, sensory details, protagonist versus narrator. narrator. What, you may ask? I'm not a protagonist, I'm writing about myself. The mini craft lectures are based on my real life experience of writing my memoir. For example, last week I received editorial feedback from a New York based author and writing coach. She praised my scenes, dialogue, and developing myself as the protagonist, the character that goes from scene to scene to scene. That said, she was disappointed. My story, story currently lacks a strong narrator voice, the voice that deeply reflects, the voice that connects the reader with the narrator. So in our sessions together, we'll discuss the aforementioned and share our stories with one another. I hope you will join me for Let's Write Together, a six week course, number nine in your catalog. Thank you. And this is Carol Rudy again from the Museum of Russian Art telling you about course number 10, which is the second course that I will be offering uh, this fall. It's called Ukrainian Vision, Artists and Their Cultural Vision, offered October 31 from 3 to 4.30 through Zoom. I feel as though I need to clarify a bit for all of you the name of the museum that I represent. We call ourselves the Museum of Russian Art because there isn't really a very good way to describe what we really do. And so particularly in this moment when we see Russian armies invading Ukraine, we at the museum have had to be very clear that we too stand with the Ukrainian people in what they are experiencing. And we say that because for us, the word Russian, as I mentioned before, covers both the Russian empire's entire territory and that of the Soviet Union. So we have had many exhibits on Ukrainian art and folkways, as well as Russian art and folkways and others from various parts of that great geographic district, including, I might add, an exhibit from Alaska. And so it is with joy that I'm able to offer several uh, presentations on Ukrainian art and in connection with that Ukrainian history. Uh, your program leaders have chosen this particular one for me to do uh, on a, in October. Uh, and it is the kind of presentation that covers the kinds of art and the way that artists have expressed themselves from ancient times, and I'm talking 4,000 uh, BC to roughly the present, really to 1991. And during that period of time, we will, we will discover the enormous variety of both people groups and artistic expressions that were part of the Ukrainian experience, not only, but also contributed to what we know as Ukrainian. And so I hope that you will join me for this experience and for this glimpse into Ukraine as we go through and look through the eyes of its artists. Thank you. Hi, Beth Larrabee again. This is for course number 11. I'm reading for Jan Libby, who could not be with us today. Her class, number 11, is get a clue about Iowa's local food system. It will meet for one day, Monday, October 10th, from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Central Time, and will be presented on Zoom. So now I'm reading her words. It's not the professor with the candlestick in the library. It's our food system and it's oh so much more than your local farmer's market. During this class, we will play an interactive game of Iowa Food Systems Clue with multiple rounds of information and interaction. Similar to the old time favorite game of Clue, participants are invited to work together in this case to share their knowledge and together expand everyone's Iowa Food Systems insights. As a host, of Iowans from all across our food system spectrum and the Iowa Food Systems Coalition, we are working hard to craft a food 
system plan for Iowa. Join the class and learn how you too can be part of this exciting action. Hello, this is Ron Palumbo again, and um, I'm offering class number 14 entitled Critical Race Theory, A Brief History. Uh, this time I will be offering it in person on Tuesday, October 11th. Uh, this single session PowerPoint presentation attempts to trace how a law school theory developed in the 1980s became a hot button political issue 40 years later. We'll begin by considering working definitions of some key terms in this theory, particularly the difference between prejudice and racism. Next, we'll take a look at the contribution of just a few of the key thinkers who helped develop this theory into an elective course in graduate schools. Finally, we will attempt to unravel how an abstract legal theory suddenly became synonymous with a threat to parental decision-making in educating their children. If like me, you found yourself puzzled at suddenly hearing the phrase critical race theory all over the evening news, I hope you will join me at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, October 11th for an introduction to the latest controversy in our ongoing culture wars. Thank you for your time and attention. Beth, can you unmute yourself, please? Oops, my mistake. Beth Larrabee, also representing Dr. Amber Anderson and Dr. Lee Burris for course number 15, Sustainable and Regenerative Strategies for Farmland. And this is a course that will be presented as a hybrid, both in person and on Zoom. This course will meet for three weeks on Tuesdays from October 18th through November 5th, from 9 to 10.30 a.m. Central Time. Regenerative agriculture strives to work with nature rather than against it and is more than just being sustainable. It is about reversing degradation and building soil to make it healthier and more productive than it is in its current state. Regenerative practices include using cover crops, reducing tillage, rotating crops, and adaptive grazing. All these strategies also reduce greenhouse gas emissions, increase carbon sequestration, increase drought resilience, strengthen yield stability, and increase biodiversity. This class is for everyone curious about a sustainable future for our food production, or if you actually own investment farmland, family farmland, or plan to invest in farmland, you should understand how farmland is best managed to protect our natural resources and the value of your investment. Thank you. This is Dan Becker. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Dan, yes. We can yes. hear you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And can you see me on the, on the screen? Yes. Yes. Um, Dan Becker, I'm a 1976 graduate of Iowa State in accounting, uh, and I'm a retired businessman. I have course number 17, which is apartheid, and Nelson Mandela. It's an in-person class, uh, September the 17th at 11 o'clock. The greatest sporting event of my life was the 1995 World Cup Rugby Championship, Ellis Park, Johannesburg, um, South Africa. The match was between the powerful New Zealand All Blacks and the underdog South African Springboks. I stepped off a plane that day, it was June 25th, unaware of the global significance of what I was to experience. But it became clear that connected to the game was a spirit that was well beyond that of any other sporting event. Our discussion will begin with my memory of that day and how it could shape the feelings of 50 million South Africans 
that for so many years had been embroiled in legislative segregation by tribes, by skin color, and birthright. Of course, the most important figure in this story is Nelson Mandela. I will bridge his life backward from that championship day when I felt the gravity of a man that had not one ounce of retribution in his being, despite 27 years of unjust imprisonment. We will also profile a few other South Africans that were important that day at Ellis Park, who represent characteristics of apartheid, and in some cases, it's abolishment. My hope is that through these profiles, particularly Mandela's, we can create a sense of, of a remarkable man that changed and successfully shaped a nation from the minority rule of apartheid to democracy. Thank you. Um, I repeat that this is an in-person session, September 27th, 11 to 12.30. Good afternoon. My name is Steve Jones and I'm here with Course 18. 99 years ago last week, a 16 year old girl accompanied her husband to Ames, Iowa. He was a football player and an agricultural student named Jack Trice. About two months later, she left Ames for decades before she came back as a widow a 16 year old widow. This course is a single session course called Cora May, the, the other half of the Jack Trice story. Jack Trice, as most of you know, was Iowa State's first black athlete and also the only athlete in Iowa State history to die from injuries suffered on the playing field. His story uh, is an amazing one from the note he wrote himself the night before and uh, enduring all the uh, prejudices of, of the era. That he came to Iowa State is, is interesting. And the story uh, from Cora May's standpoint is quite interesting. She was a student at Iowa State, wasn't here very long. And then she took, um, she went, went home. She never finished college, but she tried to make sure that her children through her, her uh, second husband, were all educated. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty good story. So we're gonna look at the Jack Trice story through the eyes of his wife and her life. Because when I speak to groups, often I'll ask, what happened to Cora May? Where did, what did she do? Well, then I try to explain the best I can. So this course, Cora May, the other half of the Jack Trice story is October 4th at 11 a.m. It's in person. I believe it's hybrid. Um, I hope you'll be able to uh, join us. We'll have a presentation and a discussion and learn more about one of Iowa State's most famous former students. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Jane Cox, and this is class number 19, and it's a class called Iowa State in World War I and World War II. And it will have two different sessions, Tuesdays, October 11th and 18th, uh, from 11 to 1230. So I think when most people think about Iowa State's contributions in World War I and World War II, they think about the Manhattan Project. And certainly that was a very important uh, part of what was going on at Iowa State. But there was, there was so much more. And so this course is going to talk about how the war affected the students, the faculty members, and the greater community. And the two wars were very different in uh, the way in the way that that uh, happened in in terms of the campus. Uh, World War One. 51 percent of the men who served in World War One from Iowa were farmers. In World War Two. Uh, most farmers were exempt from serving out of the quarter of a million Iowa men and women who actually served in World War II. And they were exempt because of the need for food, not only in the United States, but also it was big shipped to Great Britain and all the other allies as well. And of course, we all know food was rationed. This is my mom's sugar ration book that she had in World War II. 
And uh, so food production was very important. So we're going to look at that in terms of World War I and World War II and also campus life. And in addition, we'll look a little bit at the aftermath because in World War I, of course, uh, what was called at that time, the Spanish flu came along and actually killed more people than had died in World War I. And Iowa State certainly did not escape that tragedy. So we'll look at that. And in World War II, we'll also uh, look at the GI Bill and the thousands of men and women who came back to begin college or to continue college. And anybody who remembers uh, Pamel Court, we'll talk a little bit about Pamel Court and um, how the university tried to help in every way that it could um, with the returning students after World War II was over. So I hope you'll join me for this course. I think there's a lot of wonderful information and I think it'll make you proud of your school and uh, of your community. So thank you and hope to see you in the class. Hello. My name is Homer Gartz. Am I on? Yeah, they say yes. Okay, hello, my name is Homer Gartz. I'll be doing the course number 20 in world music, September 13th to October 4th. That's Tuesday from one o'clock to 2.30. This course explores and examines music from around the world. 12 different countries will be covered during the four weeks. Differences and similarities by country will be noted recognizing that all music does have melody, harmony, rhythm, tempo, and dynamics in common. A look at the culture, geography, and history of each country becomes important to understand the music development. The types of instruments played and vocal techniques used create different sounds throughout the world. This class will listen to selected music excerpts from each country that is presented and examine how the sounds are made and what skills are needed. Each week an outline will be present, provided with a format designed for evaluation and personal preference. Now is the time for you to enjoy the challenges of appreciating and understanding all music. Hope to see you in world music. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Hi there. We hear you. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Charles Knicker. Uh, and uh, along with Vivi Raman, we are team teaching course 21, holding civil conversations on common ground issues for democracy. Well, sadly, as we all know, uh, our country is experiencing increased violence because of ideological differences and a seemingly impossible uh, division among groups. But you know, the history of our country, we have said, dissent is as American as apple pie. Well, how do we get back to interacting with each other? So we're going to try to do something and it will be interactive uh, we're proposing civil, or some people call it uh, moral conversations. We're going to use a model that's been developed at the University of Vermont. Now, our four sessions will be on October 11th, 18th, 25th, and November 1st. That's a Tuesday from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Uh, briefly, session one, again, this is an in-person, not an online course. We'll, and it's at the Green Hills Community Room. We'll begin by acknowledging our diversity of worldviews and how we process truth and try to get at facts. And then we'll pursue uh, why, what is common good and can that really be our goal? Session two will turn to the labels that we frequently misuse uh, to pigeonhole people. And we will learn some techniques that will improve and uh, help enhance positive dialogues. Session three, we're going to review 
talks about what is everything from authoritarianism and tyranny to signs about what strengthens or weaknesses, weakens democracy. And then the final session, which will be the frosting on the cake, will be a class chosen discussion on a relevant common good issue today. So thank you and hope to see you in class 21. Thank you. Shane, it's your turn. I'm Jane Beatty, and I will be teaching watercolor techniques, course number 23. It meets for six weeks on Tuesdays from 3 to 5 p.m. The first session is September 20th, and the last is October 25th. In this course, uh, we have three main objectives. One is to understand what is unique about watercolor painting and to uh, apply and to uh, learn how to apply the paint so that uh, the effects of watercolor are achieved on the paper. Second is to uh, learn to mix a wide range of colors from just three primary colors, a red, yellow, and a blue, and to um, understand uh, how these colors relate with each other. And the third is to uh, plan and produce a painting. Each student will produce a painting and we will um, have a show on the last session. And that is a lot of fun. Um, it is important for each student to have the best materials for following the exercises in the course. And so we've decided to purchase the paper and the paint that will be needed for the course. And the uh, cost of this is reflected in the registration fee. The paper and paint will be uh, distributed in the first class and uh, students will receive an email before class telling what else they need to bring to the first class. So thank you and I hope to see, I hope you see in class. Thank you. Hello, I'm Ron Palumbo. I'll be presenting class number 24 entitled Understanding Seasonal Affective Disorder, presented in person on Tuesday, November 1st. Now, as days get shorter, many people find themselves more down than usual, less energized, less interested in their favorite activities. A small percentage of adults who experience this change of mood with the change of seasons um, have been identified as suffering from a type of depression now called seasonal affective disorder, or appropriately enough, or SAD for short. Researchers at the National Institute of Mental Health, or NIM, have been studying SAD and its mild, milder cousin, the winter blues, for nearly four decades now. If you're interested in an introduction to their findings about the causes and choices for treatment of this seasonally related mood disorder, uh, please join me for this single session PowerPoint presentation uh, from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, November 1st. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Barbara Pleasance and I'm teaching course number 25, Anti-Semitism in America, Past and Present. This is a class that will be presented only on Zoom. It's for six weeks, starting Tuesday, September 13th till October 25th. We are skipping October 4th. And it's on Tuesdays from 9 to 10.30, again on Zoom. So what do the following all have in common? Peter Stuyvesant, uh, the uh, governor of uh, Dutch New York in the 1600s. Senator Hab Henry Cabot Lodge in around the year 1900. Henry Ford in the 1920s. The Immigration Restriction Act of 1924, Father Charles Coughlin, a radio priest in the 1930s, the US State Department in the 30s and 40s, 
Marjorie Taylor Greene and white nationalism. Well, as you can tell, I've gone through many uh, years of history here. And of course, what ties them all together is various manifestations of anti-Semitism, either overtly expressed or reflected in various policies. And these are all connected to what's been called the longest hatred or anti-Semitism. So what are the origins? We will begin looking at the origins which go back about 2000 years, of course not in this country obviously, and then move to colonial America. And as we look at the growth of the Jewish population, we will look at the various ways in which anti-Jewish or anti-Semitic uh, incidents and attitudes affected people in many different ways from subtle prejudice, public or institutional uh, policies, threats of violence or actual violence as we saw at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh and as was threatened in this Colleyville Synagogue just a few months ago. And um, I hope if you're interested in this, you will join me on Zoom uh, in September. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. My name is Shobha Prem Kumar, and I am a teaching professor of finance at the College of Business. And my session ID is 26, and it's on Bitcoin. It's a one day presentation on Tuesday, September 20th from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Bitcoin is a digital currency launched in 2008 by a pseudonymous person called Satoshi Nakamoto. Since then, Bitcoins and several other cryptocurrencies have surged in popularity worldwide as a medium of payment as well as investments. Unlike fiat currencies, they are intangible. They are purely digital and they are not controlled by any central authority such as banks or financial institutions. And um, there are 15,000 merchants worldwide who accept Bitcoin payments. In US alone, there are 2,000 300 companies, and some of the well-known and prominent companies include uh, Microsoft, Home Depot, Whole Foods, Etsy, Overstock, and Tesla also accepted Bitcoin payments for a while and then changed its mind. So El Salvador has accepted Bitcoin as their legal tender. Many of the countries are also experimenting with their own version of central bank digital currency. So this course is for one session and we will be exploring the benefits of digital currency, talk a little bit about blockchain technology which powers Bitcoin and also discuss some challenges. I hope you all will join me and find it interesting and informative. Thank you. This is Sam Wormley. I'm going to teach course number 27, photography, tri uh, photography tips and techniques. We used to call it photography trips. <laughs> uh, this is a six week class and runs from 11 a.m. to 1230, uh, starting September 27th. This class really covers uh, major principles of photography. In the simplest terms, we work on capturing what you see and how you want to depict it. We will concentrate on the nuts and bolts of our cameras, uh, composition, lighting, photojournalism, post photo processing, sharing, backup, and storage. And really at the heart of this class is that each week we will share photos taken with each other, share photos with each other that we took in the previous week and uh, uh, support each other and critique the photographs and, and really learn from each other. Thank you.
Good afternoon. My name is Chuck Ochter. I'm teaching class number 28, uh, the 60s. It's a three-week class on Zoom on Tuesdays, September 13th, 21st, and 27th from 1 until 2.30. Uh, do you remember what you were doing when you learned that President Kennedy was shot? Uh, did you take part in anti-war demonstrations? Uh, do you remember all the bi bills that uh, LBJ had passed for his great society program? Did you ever wish that you had attended Woodstock? In class, we'll discuss Kennedy's New Frontier program and Johnson's Great Society program and how they changed America along the political side in the 60s. We're gonna spend time reflecting on Vietnam, civil rights, and the countercultural movements, and even throw in a little flower power. Uh, we're gonna look at the movies, the books, TV, art, and the many types of music that were popular during the 60s. Can you believe that in the 60s, butter was 69 cents a pound, eggs were 39 cents a dozen, bacon, 29 cents a pound, chicken, 33 cents a pound, and you can get a half a gallon of ice cream for 39 cents. And gas in 1965 was 30 cents a gallon, and it really went up big time to 33 cents a gallon in 1967. I got onto this by reading Tom Brokaw's book, Boom. And he said in the book, and I quote, one minute it was Ike and the man in the gray final suit in a lonely crowd. And the next minute it was time to turn on, tune in and drop out. It was time for we shall overcome and burn baby burn. While Americans were walking on the moon, Americans were dying in Vietnam. There were assassinations and riots. Jackie Kennedy became Jackie O. There were tie-dyed shirts and hard hats. Black power and law and order. Martin Luther King Jr. and George Wallace. Ronald Reagan and Tom Hayden. Gloria Steinem and Anita Bryant. Mick Jagger and Wayne Newton. That's from Tom Brokaw and Boom. Please consider joining us for a fun class in rem reminiscing and learning more about the 60s. Thank you. I'm gonna be filling in for um, Colleen Schwartz for class number 29, Foot Foundations on Tuesday, October the 11th, November uh, through November the 1st from one to 2.30. Um, Colleen says, I'm sorry that I couldn't be with all of you this morning or this afternoon, but I look forward to meeting you all and spending four sessions taking all things feet, talking about all things feet. We'll go through many of the considerations and decision-making processes that doctors and patients make together as far as their foot and ankle functions go. So we, specific topics, week one will be multi-muscular, secular, and biochemist exam, find the right shoes, fall prevention. Week two, dermatology. Boy, I get the tough ones here. Um, exams, over-the-counter treatments, and infection prevention. Number th week three, vascular exam, senior foot care. And week four, neurologic exam. And November is Diabetes Awareness Month. There'll be plenty of time for questions and discussion, as well as interactive stretches and ex exercises taught. Step into your fall and winter with a better understanding of your foot function and foundation. This is Ningjia. My course number 30, Emperors of China and the Tsars of Russia in the 18th century will be full of interesting and important topics such as Yellow dragon was the symbol of imperial China. Double head eagle was the symbol of imperial Russia. Where did they come from? How did the emperors and the czars associate themselves with those symbols? In another example, when the two umpires signed the treaties, they put seal stamps on the treaty documents. What did these seal stamps look like? Why were seals important to their bilateral relationship? We will find it out. Most interestingly, the Russian threat to claim back Alaska in response to US sanctions in the current Ukraine war requires 
our knowledge of history regarding the U.S. purchase of Alaska in 1868 to answer the Russians back. History of Russian Alaska goes back to the 18th century. This course will cover that. In a very pleasant, enjoying way, engaging way, you will have a good learning experience in this course. You can also be a significant contributor to our learning as well. This course on Zoom will meet four times on Tuesdays from 3 to 4.30 from September 13th to October 4th. I hope to see you in the class. Thank you. Okay, can I go ahead? Yeah. All right. Hi, I'm Catherine from, I just blew in from the great state of California. I'm a native who in college saw the great Malcolm X. It was a liberating experience, and in many ways I've kept the faith. I'm teaching a course on slavery. I am a historian by training. This is a very powerful subject, a brutal reminder of what humankind is capable of. We start this course with the Portuguese, then the English, the Dutch, the French, who journey down the African coast and finally involve us all in an Atlantic world, which is underpinned by the profits made from slavery. We'll consider, because there's the information is recently available, the British slave empire, and also very well researched, very well understood in this country, the lay of the land for the deep south and the states in which slavery was practiced. Recent scholarship highlights a lot of subjects and more interesting and maybe a little lighter would be the African-American contribution to Southern cooking uh, and African-Americans claiming their, their due out of that subject. There are also quilts, which give us the history and women continue to sew and carry on even African patterns. Finally, we'll feature the movie Glory, which is a Civil War movie with an African-American troops led by a Massachusetts um, member of the elite or Brahmin who go forth trying to capture a Southern fort and magnanimously fail. Uh, this, this movie some time ago won Academy Awards. Participation in this class is welcome. Questions are welcome and informed opinions. Thank you. Davis, are you there? You could unmute. There we are. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, good. Um, I'm Avis Pohl. I'm a certified financial planner and I have spent oh, 25 to 30 years helping people manage their money. And um, very recently, well, in fact, when the pandem pandemic started, I think I became so aware of people who could be in the hospital, maybe got dementia or, or Alzheimer's or something, because I had time to touch base with some friends I hadn't heard of for a long time. And uh, I realized that many of the people who were my age have lost spouses um, and had illnesses and this kind of thing. So that made me really aware that people should get their ducks in line as far as their finances are concerned. <clears throat> so my class is, um, is 30, number 34 and 36, and it will be September 14th and September 28th. 
1 to 2.30. And that's going to be the same class twice. So uh, I'll give it in two, two sessions, but it'll be a repeat each time. Uh, when I gave it last time, last spring, uh, it was very popular. I, it was, I did it online and on Zoom, and 64 people came. So I knew that if we had such a good uh, uh, interest in it this time, um, I couldn't handle 64 people live. So I've broken it up into two sections. And it's going to be very easy for us to do it live so that we have some interaction. And this is going to be um, a class that will help people get their own ducks in line. Many of us have said, gee, I've needed to do this for a long time. Um, I should have put this together a long time ago, but I didn't have time. Now, if we're retired, we probably do have time. So I would like to just tell you one way you can do it is to buy this book. It's, um, let's see, there we go. It is called Get It Together. Uh, it's available on um, Amazon, but this one is the ninth um, edition. And in September 27th, the NOLO is coming out with a new edition. The reason that they need to put different editions on is because there's a lot of state-specific things in there, a lot of websites, and a lot of things about laws that have changed uh, since the last publication. Um, I have um, worked with the uh, BAM here in town, Books a Million, and uh, they haven't been able to get a lot of copies, but they would take orders from people and you wouldn't have to pay the postage for it to be delivered to your house if you wanted to buy it at BAM. You need to tell them that it's uh, for, you're from Avis Poll's class, but that's a very good way to get yourself jump started on this. Um, in the class, we're going to talk about powers of attorney. Um, you'll have a, a half of it is going to be on discussion between between family members. Uh, once upon a time, people would say, "I don't want my kids to know." what we have, so I don't want to tell them till, till I die. Well, we're not going to wait for people to die before we get powers of attorney, we get all of the finances lined up, because if somebody becomes incapacitated, let's say from an accident, from being hospitalized, um, having dementia, having Alzheimer's, um, leaving all of that information for somebody to pick up and Take, take your shoes and run with them. There's got to be a way to keep that together so that the person in your family or your friends or whatever um, would be able to pick up this information. And that, that big book is very nice, but thanks to Gerilyn and her, and her contacts, uh, we were able to find this book. Let's see if we can show it. Don't worry about writing it down, because if you come to class, you're going to get a copy of it. And it's from the American Institute of, for Economic Research called If Something Should Happen, How to Organize Your Financial and Legal Affairs. And it's everything that I talked about in the last sessions. We're going to talk about them again. And this time, there will be a workbook. And we'll even give you pencils so that uh, with erasers, Right, Gerilyn? So that uh, as this information changes, uh, it can be changed too. Then if somebody in your family uh, needs to know what's going on, because maybe you went on vacation for a month and somebody had to pay the bills or take care of the dog or any of that, um, they need to find this book to know how to pay your bills. We're also going to talk about all those powers of attorney, the different kinds of powers of attorney that people have while they're still alive because powers of attorney end when somebody dies, then the executive of the state takes over and 
it would be really handy for executors to be able to pick up this book that's got all the information in it that they need to know to settle an estate. So um, I'm really excited about doing this live because we're gonna be able to have a lot of interaction and um, talk about what's going on locally in Iowa. Uh, there's a lot of laws that have to do with cars and how you, how you can uh, give, your, give a beneficiary your car. It's very different from it is in other states. So a lot of the stuff that's state specific is what I will be looking up so that we can, as we're looking at the book, uh, put it right in there and um, it'll, it'll be taken care of for your family. Then the other, um, the last hour will be how to have a discussion between family members. I call it intergenerational discussions, but sometimes it needs to be inner sibling discussions. But uh, I had, I put together a checklist and we're gonna go through that and do some, uh, excuse me, do some um, discussion on how we can approach all of this within our families. Actually, this um, all of the stuff that we're gonna put in this book doesn't have to be for just retired people or parents. I think anybody who has any property at all, or at least as an adult that owns something should be putting this together. So everybody's gonna get a book, but if you need more um, pages of it, I will be able to give you a PDF with the, those pages that you can share with your family. So, Geraldine, thanks so much for finding this. This is going to make our lives much easier and much more fun to be able to put it into the live sessions. So I hope that everybody will give this a, a shot and uh, let me help you get your ducks together or get them in line anyway. Thank you. Thank you very much for letting me talk about this today. Hello again, I'm Jane Cox, and uh, this is course number 35, and this is going to be Irving Berlin, the Dean of American Songwriters, and it will be a one-session class on Wednesday, September the 21st, from 1 o'clock to 2.30. Anybody ever heard this song? Blue skies smiling at me, nothing but blue skies. Do I see? That was one melody written by Irving Berlin, who wrote over 1,500 songs. And this course is going to look a little bit at, at his life as well as his music. Now, we won't look at all 1,500 songs. We'll look at maybe 12. <laughs> but uh, there are so many that we can cover. And Irving Berlin's life as a human being is, is a fantastically interesting life, full of ups and downs. I don't think very many people know that I, he was actually born in Siberia, the youngest of eight children, and came to the United States. And by the end of his life, through exceptional abilities and hard work as well. Um, he was known throughout the world. He was uh, living the American dream in lots of kinds of ways, having lived through World War I, where he was drafted as soon as he became a U.S. citizen, <laughs> World War I, uh, the Depression, World War II, and uh, wrote music throughout the whole time. He, his life was a fantastically interesting life and his music is going to, is going to live. You know, uh, somebody asked him one time if he was writing for posterity and Irving Berlin replied, no, for prosperity. And he achieved prosperity and poster <laughs> music that still is uh, uh, listened to today. Jerome Kern was once asked, and um, what is Irving Berlin's place in American music? And Jerome Kern responded, Irving Berlin does not have a place in American music. Irving Berlin is American music. So we'll look at the life, we'll look at the music of Irving Berlin 
a fantastic story of a great talent. Hope you can join me for that one course um, on Wednesday, September 21st. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Adam Schwartz, Director of Ames National Laboratory. I'll be talking about course ID 3738, Ames Laboratory Past, Present, and Future. This will be a hybrid course, both virtual and in person, on September 21st from 5.30 to 7 p.m. In this course, I will recap the, the significant scientific contributions made by a top secret team on the campus of Iowa State that led to the purification of uranium and ultimately an earlier end to World War II. That work led to the creation of Ames National Laboratory, now one of only 17 Department of Energy National Labs and the only one embedded in the campus of the university. Ames Laboratory creates materials and energy solutions like, like lead-free solder used in virtually every piece of electronic equipment out there from cell phones to computers to monitors. We've created new catalysts for biofuel production, metal powders to accelerate the adoption of, of 3D printing and analytical characterization tools that helped enable mapping of the human genome. I'll cover current programs and, and directions we are going forward. Ames Laboratory leads the national program in critical materials. We're creating new chemistry to deal with the world's plastic waste challenges. And we're working toward next generation refrigeration and air conditioning. If you're interested in a preview, Ames Laboratory is the focus of Iowa State University's exhibit at the State Fair. Please stop by the Varied Industries Building. Thank you for your interest. I look forward to seeing you in September. This is Sam Wormley. I'm teaching the next four classes, 39 through 42. Class number 39 is personal transportation without gasoline. The course offers resources. By, by the way, all four of these courses are one day courses and uh, you can tie them together to basically it's the, the increasing temperature of our globe, the climate change which has spawned uh, each of these four courses. This first one, Transportation Without Gasoline, offers the resources to help you transition from using cars and trucks that use fossil fuel, such as gasoline, to electric vehicles powered by wind turbines and solar panels. 23% of all the CO2 emissions come from vehicles. Everything we can do to minimize CO2 emissions helps the environment. What we're going to be talking about will be, uh, in general, personal transportation modes, which include things like walking and bicycling, but we will concentrate mostly on the electric, on the electric vehicles, short EVs, hybrid electric vehicles, and plug-in hybrids. We'll also take a look at, fusion, uh, at uh, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles and even renewable batteries. Uh, so this is, this is really to help in the transition between fossil fuel burning cars and electric cars. Course number 40 is called Water, Water Everywhere. I think you might have heard that phrase. But we're going to talk about extracting water from the atmosphere. In the warming climate, the amount of flooding and drought has increased. The need for fresh, clean water is also increasing due to the changing climate. And this class explores the science of extracting water from the atmosphere and offers instruction as to how we might pursue individually or, or even in small groups. The specific topics that we will talk about, we'll, we'll talk about the evaporation of water, We'll talk about materials known as metal organic frameworks, uh, which can elect moisture. And the, uh, as, uh, as, the, as the air temperature is cooling, the moisture collects in these structures. And as it warms up, then it liberates it as liquid water. We'll talk about the condensation of water, passive harvesting of water, and active harvesting of water uh, with renewable energy. Course number 41, heat waves, uh, cause and survival. 
sooner or later, we will experience an extended heat wave due to warming climate. This class explores the science and meteorology, and most importantly, how can we stay cool in high heat and high humidity, even when the power fails? So that's what this course is all about, is understanding and surviving heat waves. Course number 42, solar power, reducing your carbon footprint. This course really gives you the tools to understand what is available. Reducing our carbon footprint by, uh, you know, we, we use electronics and vehicles and, and electricity with our homes. Uh, and if we can convert to wind or solar energy, that's what this course is really about. Not really the wind, but the solar, because that's the kind of practical thing we can do, putting uh, small solar batteries out for our electronic equipment or putting solar panels on our homes. Uh, and the goal is to give you the tools to find out what's available, to be able to do cost comparisons, uh, costs of installations, and what other limitations you might have to think about. That's what we cover. In the fourth class of the, these four, number 45, whoops, excuse me, I jumped one. No, I covered them all. Okay, I'll, I'll be quiet. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Those are beautiful uh, offerings that you're making. I appreciate hearing them. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Daishin McCabe. I'm one of the two head priests at Zen Fields, a 501c3 nonprofit in Ames. And I'm offering a class called uh, beginner's mind Zen, and it will be on <clears throat> November 2nd from 3 to 4.30. Just a little bit about myself. I spent 15 years studying and training in Zen temples, mainly in Pennsylvania, but also in Japan as a monastic. I have been teaching world religions at DMAC since 2015. I also facilitate trauma-sensitive yoga at Broadlawns and at Mary Greeley on their behavioral health units. My uh, post-monastic experience, I trained for one year as a chaplain at Wellspan Hospital in York, Pennsylvania. And I'm presently working also as the interim head priest at the Nebraska Zen Center in Omaha. About the class, we spend a lot of time learning how the world works and how to improve the world situation. And these things are all very important, but it's only half of the equation. Our own minds create the world in which we live. The Buddha said, what we are today comes from our thoughts of yesterday and our present thoughts build our life of tomorrow. Our life is the creation of our mind. Zen is about understanding our own minds. The quality of our being affects the quality of our doing. If we want a high quality of doing good work in the world, then we need to start with a high quality of being. As the Venerable Thich Nhat Hanh has said, there is no way to peace. Peace is the way. In this short intro to Zen class, we'll be practicing Zen meditation and reading excerpts from Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Again, the class is November 2nd, 3 to 4.30, course number 43. Anyone is welcome. I'll offer guidance on posture and how to handle excessive thinking, as well as a broader context for Zen teaching. As Shunru Suzuki says, in the expert's mind, there are few possibilities. In the beginner's mind, there are many. If we all had a beginner's mind, how might our many possibilities and dreams as a country and a world 
come to fruition. Thank you and hope to see you in class. Hi, I am Susan Gliasta, Public Information Officer with the City of Ames. Our class ID is number 44. It's the Ames Climate Action Plan update. The class will be held from 9 to 10.30 a.m. on Thursday, November 3rd. The Ames City Council has a long history of supporting sustainability and creating a climate action plan for Ames is the City Council's goal. The process began several years ago when we developed a greenhouse gas inventory to provide a baseline. Greenhouse gases have been linked to climate change and severe weather events. So a climate action plan helps develop those actions needed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. In 2021, the Ames City Council set an ambitious goal of reducing community-wide greenhouse gas by 83% by 2030 and reaching net zero by 2050. So those dates are coming up quickly. At this stage in writing our plan, we're focusing on what we call the six big moves, major focus areas of how to remove carbon. The big moves include building retrofits, net zero new construction, renewable energy generation, reducing vehicle emissions, increasing active transportation like biking and walking and taking public transit, and also reducing waste emissions. Each big move has several action steps attached to it. Our class will consider the action steps through various lenses, including cost, feasibility, legality, funding source, equity, and more. This class will also remind participants of conservation programs the City of Ames currently offers. So thank you for considering our class and I encourage you to join us. Thank you, Susan. I am co-host of KHOI's Community Radio's Science Bites and I'm perplexed, Sam. I need to know more about science in the news. What can we do about that? Well, gosh, Mike, one way is offer a science in the news class as an Ollie course. And oh, that way, God. yeah, we can have we can have all of those uh, students that participate in the class read science articles ahead of time, uh, science that's occurred in the in the week just prior to the class. And we can really digest that all together. There's one problem I see with that, Sam, and that's we're going to have to kind of bone up on science ourselves so we know what they're talking about. Well, gosh, Mike, uh, the students are going to have to bone up on the science too so that we can all have a good discussion. I think it's a good, I think it's a good way to get everybody thinking about science, getting excited about the science, discussing the science. And Mike, do you think it's okay if we go down a rabbit hole now and then? Sure. Uh, or you know, a Harry Warren, let's put it that way. But uh, we digress a little bit, Sam. There's a number of Ollie courses that actually have science uh, behind them. And maybe we just need those students to take this class and we can discuss that local science. Well, Mike, I uh, invite all the Ollie listeners uh, in this Zoom program and, and ones that read the catalog to take science in the news and we'll share the science together. And that's class 45. And how many times does it meet? It meets for six weeks and it starts the, the 15th of September. It's an 11 o'clock to 1230 course. So people can uh, just have their lunch while they're eating science, while they're, <laughs> while they're discussing the science. Well, yes, Sam, as we like to say- me When my, my number, I don't know the number, and I, I want to get it over with, whatever I have to say. Can you tell me when my number comes? Vivi, you're up right now. There you go, okay, Vivi. Very good. I'm going to take just 30 seconds. Uh, I will talk about the interactions and impacts of various civilizations in history. And in particular, I want to talk about Western civilization its impact on the rest of the world, enormous impact, both positive, many positive, and many negative impacts. And these are the things that will be covered in my talk. Thank you.
Jenny, you're up. Hi, thank you. My name is Jenny Burnett, and I am the museum educator at the African American Museum of Iowa. Um, I am going to be talking about courses 49 and 50. Um, course 49 is titled First in Flight Tuskegee Airmen. That is going to be offered by Zoom on October 27th from 1 to 2.30. Um, the Tuskegee Airmen were a group of military pilots like no other. Um, but in order to understand their story, we're going to need to understand the military service of African Americans before them. So we'll learn that in our course. The Tuskegee Airmen were extraordinary individuals and from their ranks came the first black general in the Air Force, the first black commander of a racially integrated Air Force unit and the nation's first black four-star general. Their bravery, courage and skill made strides towards military desegregation and carried the US forward just as they carried themselves forward as the first in flight. And then my name is still Jenny Barnett and I'm on course number 50. Um, course number 50 is titled Behind the Beat. That is going to be offered on Zoom on November 3rd from one o'clock to 2.30. This presentation is going to utilize music to explore African-American history through a review of Black contributions in music. During this presentation, you're going to enjoy many different styles of music and song. The types of music you'll learn about and hear are African beats, spirituals, blues, jazz, R&B, rock and roll, hip hop, and many other forms of modern music. Some of the songs that you may recognize will include songs like Crazy Blues, Saturday Night Fish Fry, Tutti Fruity, Please Mr. Postman, Try a Little Tenderness, A Change is Coming, This is So Gone, and This is America. To understand musical history, you are gonna to have to take a look behind the beat. So thank you for your time and attention, and I hope to see many of you um, during these presentations. Thank you. My name is Steve Loney, and I am uh, presenter number 51. Uh, through my 50 years of uh, football, uh, my time is gonna be uh, recorded as 50 years of football from walk on to the NFL. Uh, I will chronicle my journey from 1970 when I was a walk on at Iowa State University uh, as a player through uh, my coaching career of four years in high school, 25 in college, 15 in the NFL, and one most recently in the USFL. Through this discussion, I hope to show that sports were the stage that I lived, but my <clears throat> life, I lived my life, but that real life lessons can be taken from my experiences that apply to many, regardless of their field of endeavor. Those experiences traveled through the highs of being a part of a team with the best record in the NFL, setting NCAA records, being hired to fill a spot that put me in a position only 63 others held, in this country, to winning only one game, being fired, unable to find employment, and trying to find a way to provide for my family of five on an annual salary of $10,000 when I was 41 years old. Uh, my wish for this class is to be interactive with questions uh, and input from the students. I learned long ago that you learn every day and you can learn from everyone with which you come in contact. Uh, the presentation will be student driven as we talk about leadership, organization, excellence, uh, in any direction we might head. It's gonna be offered uh, live and on Zoom, uh, September 15th, 3 to 4.30 PM. Uh, Lynn Maves is not able to be here today, but she sent some information for me to share with you. So this is class number 52, more yoga for everybody, not everybody, but everybody uh, will be on Thursday, September 29th through October 20th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. Central Time. Join me for fun for four sessions of gentle yoga for all bodies. 
class featuring the, the Yamas of Yoga. Don't know what the Yamas of Yoga are? Tune in on Zoom in September and October with me to find out. Hi, my name is Tom Carlson and I set up class 53, which is going to be November 3rd from 3 to 4.30. And it is seven steps to living a happy and healthy gluten-free life. And since Jules could not be here, I will read what she sent for me to read. I'll be covering the seven steps everyone needs to take when they're going gluten-free. It all starts in your kitchen. But I also go over label reading from beginners and experts, going into detail about the FDA's gluten-free labeling requirements and the trickier points every gluten-free consumer needs to understand in order to shop and dine out safely. We will cover the top 10 places Gluten free gluten can hide in your food. And I will also explain the differences between naturally gluten free and gluten removed. Beers, purity protocol versus regular oats, certified gluten free products versus those with a simple gluten free claim, and more. So join us in November to receive really important information for those that either are gluten-free, gluten-sensitive, or even uh, celiac disease um, issues, because she is an expert in covering all of that stuff. So thank you for that. And we'll turn on to Jim. Good afternoon, I'm Jim Patton. And I'm going to be leading a couple of local field trips. So let's take a look at, at each one individually. The first one's called Ag 101. And this is both of these have an emphasis on the agriculture college and the emphasis of agriculture in Iowa. Agriculture 101 is going to be primarily around items dealing with livestock. Uh, one of the first things we're going to, first of all, we're going to be driving out to the sites, which are all fairly close to Ames. So you'll need to have transportation or share transportation with someone. Uh, the first one's on September 15th. We're going to be going out to the dairy farm, which is about two miles south of town. Uh, we're going to be hearing about not only what they do now, but some new things that they're going to be making changes on. Next door to it is the compost operation, which doesn't sound very dramatic, but we have found in the past a lot of people have an interest in what happens to compost. And in fact, there's some new uh, areas of use of compost we're going to hear about. On September 22nd, we're going to be visiting on down the road at the poultry farm. And there'll be a brand new turkey farm introduced at about the same time that we're there, perhaps a week or two before. And also, we're going to include the Ag 450 farm. Our instruction that day will be by the students and what they do there on the Ag 450 farm. The last session of Ag 101 will be September 29th. And, uh, that's a little bit different than perhaps what your catalog said, because we're flipping a session with the, uh, with the other ag class. On the 29th, uh, all the students will take SciRide from the alumni building, and we're going uh, to uh, get off the SciRide at the animal science location. We're going to look at the horse barns. We're going to learn a little bit more about animal science. We're going to be touring the farmhouse, learning a little bit about the museum that's held there. And then the culminating activity of both Ag 101 and Ag 102 is a visit and enjoyment of ice cream at the creamery. So that's pretty much Ag 101, and it starts September 15th in three sessions. Ag 102 has a similar format. Again, we're going to be going to the sites. On October 6th, we'll be going to the horticulture farm. Of course, by October 6th, they'll be have done harvesting. We're going to learn a little bit about some new innovations of turf management. October 13th, the following uh, Thursday, we'll be going to uh, the BioCentury Agronomy Farm out west of town, out near the uh, United Community School. We're going to learn about some new products and some new equipment at those two locations. And then the third session on uh, uh, Ag 102 will be a visit by, by, uh, by uh, SciRide 
a visit to Curtis, some of the history of the Ag College, why we continue to have a top 10 rating in the, in the world of an ag institution. We're gonna look at some of the remodeling there as well as an agronomy and over into the uh, food science building and enjoy some ice cream at the creamery. So two fairly local field trips, a little bit different. They're all gonna be in person. There'll be some walking involved. So we encourage people to wear shoes accordingly. And both of them will be culminated in the third session by learning how to use SciRide. So we would invite you and encourage you to att attend Ag 101, emphasis on livestock, and Ag 102, which is a combination of horticulture and agronomy. Look forward to seeing you then. And I'm back and we're talking about number 57, a Jefferson field trip. It is Friday, September 23rd from 9 a.m. where we'll leave to 5 p.m. And we will go, be going to RVP 1875, which is a furniture making um, museum in Jefferson. They will use the woods that were grown in Iowa at that time and the basic equipment to process furniture that they used during those times. After we have a um, instructional class there, we will have a three person um, presentation of Fiddle Around the Roof preceded by a lunch at the same place. We will then go to Deal Orchards and we will be given a tour. We will have a chance to partake of some apple ciders we, and also either apple pie or, or apple dumplings. And you'll be able to view the different things that you can buy there. And then we will proceed back to Ames to finish the trip. Hope to see you then. Thanks. Hey, I think that means we are down to the end. And for some reason, my picture's not moving, but that's all right. Um, don't forget, tomorrow is the third, uh, first time to get in um, to register for classes. It will open up online at 8.30 a.m. Central Time. So have your classes picked out, your credit card ready, and uh, Heather and I will be more than welcome to take all those registrations. Now what we'll do is that if you would like to talk, uh, ask any of the instructors any questions, you can do that right now. Is the booklet available? Um, we, you can get it online and we do have some in the, in the building also. Thank you. Yep. Did I miss the presentation on class number 48? He was not here. The person was not here. Thank you. Gerilyn, do you want to tell people how they can access the recording once it's uploaded to the website? I will. I think I did it at the beginning, but we'll say it again. So probably won't be until probably till tomorrow. Uh, we will have the recording there and it will be on our Ollie webpage uh, right on the front page. And you'll be able to click on that and go through and see uh, if you miss something, you can listen to it again, or you can just share it with a, with a friend who you think might enjoy one of the classes. So you can see we have a lot of classes this time. So. Sherilyn? Yes, Did Jen. you want to comment about any of our member-only lectures? Uh, I can do that. Um, as some of you probably know, we have what we call members-only lectures. These are free to our members, and we have three of them this session. Uh, there's the causes and consequences of the Russo-Ukrainian War. That's on Wednesday, October the 12th. 
then on October the 19th, it's the Russian, or 2022 Russian-Ukrainian War, A History of Nations, Grievances, and Institutions. And then on um, October 26th will be the 2022 updates of the status of global climate change impacts for Iowa. That one will be strictly online. And on the first two, we will do it as a hybrid. So we will have it here in the building. And for those at a distance or who don't want to come in the building, you can watch it online. I have a question for Mike. Uh, my wife said that uh, she doesn't want to take the course if she has to read the science articles ahead of time. Uh, what do we tell people? Don't forget to unmute. Well, you guys eat dinner together, so you could discuss them then. <laughs> I would say if you don't want to read the course classes, that's fine. Um, input, you'll, you, you will absorb it as we talk about it, and it will peak a number of different questions. So don't let that stop you if you don't want to read the articles. And Janice asked a question through the chat. She wanted to know if we record all the members only lectures with the uh, presenter's permission, we will. And at this point in time, I am not 100% sure which ones we'll be recording, but we will let you know that as it happens. Good question. Anything else? I just wish I had time to take all the classes. <laughs> uh, but you could sign up for them and view them later, Sam. They're all going to be recorded. Oh, yeah. That's a we good idea, Mike. Well, not all of them will be recorded. <laughs> so well, the ones the ones Sam are interested in will be recorded. Gerilyn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh Gerilyn, I was wondering, now maybe you answered this, but Will you be recording the ones that are not uh, online? No. Uh, oh, okay. No. If it's just strictly an in-person, we will not be recording. And then you probably noticed from the catalog that there are three classes that are gonna be held in person uh, at Green Hills. So those will be great. Any other questions? There's a question in the chat if we will record the members only lectures this session. I, I answered that one. I said some of them, I need to talk to the instructor or the presenters first, but we the intent is that we will if they give us the okay. Someone wants to know where's the ISU Alumni Center? If you're in Ames, um, if you know where CY Stevens is, and if you know where the football stadium is, we are that beautiful brick building um, by that big, huge parking lot, and we are built into the side of the hill, and that's where the Alumni Center is, so. And class number 47 was not presented. The instructor was not available to join us today, and we did not get any, con any information ahead of time. But he, if I remember correctly, yes, he was a presenter in the in the spring session, he was very good. So, class, and uh, somebody wanted to know about class number 12 and 13. Are those still being offered? I believe so. Let me check my calendar here. Not my calendar, my catalog. Let's see. Yes, that's with Jeff Schroeder. Um, Jeff could not be here today. So, so he's going to be in person and as a, um, online and a hybrid. So we'll have people here in the building and then some people can watch it from home online. We probably should have mentioned that as we went through the list, sorry. Geraldine, I've, I've seen the class listing in the OLLI newsletter that you sent out recently, but I've not seen a separate course catalog like we've seen in, in past sessions. Okay. Uh, will there be one of those? I believe one should have been sent out along with the invitation to this meeting. Um, there should have been a link to that. 
if you go to the Ollie homepage, then let's see here. If you go to the homepage, you go down about halfway and to the right hand side, you'll see a big picture of the catalog. And uh -huh. this is what it looks like. It's got beautiful fall leaves on it, by the way. And this was taken by an Ollie man member, Judy Lovings. So, and if you don't find that, Bruce, let me know. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Thank all of you for being very um, attentive and sticking with us through this. It, you know, when we've got this many classes, it always takes a little bit of time. But we hope all of you take at least two, three classes. You know, keep Heather and I busy. Last chance. Well, I just want to say thanks, all, thanks to all the instructors for all those classes you're offering. Thank you. Yep. I, we couldn't do this program without those presenters. And of course, without all the committees, the curriculum committee does a tremendous amount of work. And then technology, I mean, all the committees do a great, they do a great amount of jobs, so. Uh, this is Ned McCall. Hi, Ed. Hi. And I uh, just wanted to comment that uh, I'm looking forward to these many classes I want to take. One class that you have here, I regret that you're not going to be on, on, I'm in Minneapolis. I, I wish it were going to be online. That's the Irving Berlin talk. I would really like to see that, but yeah, uh, it won't be. But just wish it had been. Well, you know, sometimes it's always a good idea that maybe we re we do repeat classes every once in a while because sometimes it doesn't work in a schedule. So maybe we could get uh, Jane to do that again, that same class, but maybe do it online in the spring. That'd be great. Thank you. So there you go, Jane. There's a little plug for you. <laughs> Anything else? All right. Last call. As we say at my family when we're all leaving. All right, everyone, have a great day. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Well, thanks, Geraldine.